Hello everyone and welcome to the Real Estate Market Analysis for Almaden Valley, California. This presentation is sponsored by White Law & Sons Real Estate Services and presented by me, Robert Whitelaw. I'm a licensed real estate broker in the state of California, a member of the National Association of Realtors and a certified ePro. Now let's go ahead and jump into the supply and demand numbers for September of 2008. Now the first thing we're going to see here are the inventory numbers. Inventory is actually up 30.7% from the same time last year. That's 27 more homes in inventory in Almaden Valley in September of 2008 than we had in September of 2007. That gives us a grand total of 115 homes currently on the market. Um, now we're, we're actually, as, a, as, re, as it relates to other time periods in the past, months in the past, we're actually not doing as bad in Almaden Valley as in some other communities where inventory numbers are way higher. Uh, but we'll see that there are a few uh, concerning things relating to the relationship between inventory and other numbers that we tend to track. Now the next thing we're going to look at is the number of homes listed. Interestingly enough, we've had a pretty big increase in the number of homes listed. That actually went up 35.7%. That's 15 more homes listed in September of 2008 and in September of 2009. That gives us a total homes listed of 57 for the month. And that really contributed to some of those growth numbers we saw in inventory. Now finally, let's take a look at sales. Sales are down a little bit. They're, they're down 6.3% from the same time last year. That I know that sounds like something maybe to be concerned about, but it actually only comes down to one home less sold this year at this time than last year. But it does continue the trend. I mean, this is one of those communities where, at least for this time of year, we have seen a steady decline in sales since 2003. So it's actually been going, the, the period of declining sales has actually been a little bit greater for Almaden Valley for a long while. However, the relationship between the number of homes that sold and the number of homes that were even on the inventory was actually very healthy in 2004 and 2005. And then in 2006, when the market started to turn down, that's when we saw inventory numbers go up. And that relationship got a little bit less healthy. Um, now, the total number of homes sold were 15. And like I like to point out with the rest of my presentations, the relationship between inventory and sold is, is kind of an important one. It gives us a good number to sort of get an idea of, of how things are doing in general. Now, the way we calculate that is we simply divide the inventory by the number of homes sold. And in this case, that will tell us two things, basically. One, how long it would take to sell off the inventory that we currently have. So if the inventory numbers and the sold numbers stayed the same for coming months, how long would it take to sell all of that inventory? And the other thing it tells us is basically how many other homes you're competing with on the marketplace. So for every home that sells, how many homes are there on the market? This month, that number was at 7.66. So for every home that sold, about seven plus homes were on the market in competition with that home. And we have about seven and a half months worth of inventory on the market. Now what's concerning about that is that last month that number is, was at 4.3. So we've had a pretty substantial increase in that. And that's relating more to the increase in inventory than anything else, but also a decline in sales. And you'll see that uh, the decline in sales actually is a little bit more concerning in that relationship than the inventory number, simply because it's actually different from what other communities in the county have experienced. And we'll get into that in just a second. Now let's go ahead and look at the supply and demand numbers going back over months all the way to June of 2007. Now the first numbers we'll look at here are inventory again, and we're going to look for trends. Right now we're at the far right at September in 2008, and we can see we've had a pretty steady decline in inventory. That's actually pretty good news, um, but it's still higher when you compare it to last year, obviously, since we already looked at last year's numbers. But we can see we did we definitely got a little bit of a, a bump from the summer season as far as inventory is consult, concerned. We did get that number going down. Last year at the same time, we actually saw a big increase in inventory relating to the months around it. it, was, it the months before it and the months after it had actually lower inventory numbers uh, than we did this year. So we get a little bit more of a dramatic decrease in inventory through the summer months of last year and then September was actually a big increase in inventory numbers. Uh, now, as far as the number of homes listed is concerned, we got a pretty big boost in the number of homes listed this month when compared to last year. Now, last year's numbers tend to go along with what you see normally for the season. 
you'll tend to see some increase in homes listed at the beginning of the summer months, sometimes during the summer months, but then usually once you hit September, things start to decline as you go into winter, and folks are more interested in, in the holidays than they are in trying to get their homes sold. And then, of course, you start to see that jump in January. This year, what we've seen is... Uh, kind of a strange increase in September. Now, this isn't unique to Almond Valley. This has gone on in all the other communities that I that I keep track of, and the county in general as well. So it shows that a lot more folks are suddenly deciding to put their homes on the market at a strange time. Uh, and, and the motivator there may be things they can't control. These, this may be just more homes, another wave of foreclosed homes. Um, we'll, we'll see how that pans out in the coming months. Now, just to sort of calibrate you to how things have changed, inventory numbers between August and September of 2008 were up, or excuse me, down 1.7%, and that was two fewer homes on the market than the previous month. The number of homes listed was up 32.6%. That was an increase of 14 homes, so 14 more homes were listed in the month of September than in August. And sales were down 48.1%. That's 13 fewer homes. Um, that's really the concerning number for me at least as far as the Almaden market is concerned, primarily because we didn't see this big drop in a lot of other areas of the, of, the, of uh, Santa Clara County. Some of the other communities actually saw fairly steady performance. Now, on the upside for Almaden Valley, we, they, the Almaden Valley actually enjoyed a little bit better and can more consistent summer performance than a lot of other communities. You can see things wrapped up starting in March. April was an increase, May was an increase, and we sort of topped out there and stayed at fairly high sales numbers right through August, but then we did get a dip in September. Now, in a normal market, in a, in a market that isn't wasn't the crazy sales that we saw before the downturn and, and isn't downturn type market, but more of a balanced market, you would expect this number to drop in September. You would expect the number of sold homes to go down in September and then go down a little bit more in October, as we saw last year. Um, but last year, we also saw a pretty big drop in September. Uh, with a little bit more of a sustained bit of sales in October and November. If we see the same sort of performance we did last year, and we may actually see that simply because Almaden seems to be performing a little bit differently from other areas, uh, you may see a boost in sales next month. Frankly, I'm not going to try to anticipate what's going to happen in the next month or two because the numbers you're seeing here do not represent any of the economic downturns we've seen over the last month. Now remember, all of that happened really at the beginning of October. There wasn't enough time for any of this to really hit and modify the way the market was moving uh, at, by the time these numbers were, were created or, or during this time of the year. So the first months where we're going to start to see the hit of the downturn are going to be the numbers I present for October, and then big time we'll see it in the numbers uh, for uh, November. Now the reason, you, and obviously you won't see those numbers till November because they're a month behind. The reason is because so much of this lags behind real time. So in other words, if a home gets purchased, it goes into escrow and stays there for 30 days, and then once that 30 days is up is when the numbers get reported. So everything's off by about 30 days. So we'll see a little bit in October and a little bit more in November. By Christmas time, we'll, we'll definitely know how these economic changes have affected the market, but... Uh, so far, anecdotally, definitely it'll, it'll, it'll decrease those sales numbers a bit. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at home prices. This is going back over past years again, so we're just looking at the month of September going all the way back to 1999. And we can see that Almaden Valley enjoyed pretty good growth right up to 2007. This is this is a month where we've actually seen a dip, and this this isn't the first month we've seen prices down in Almaden. It's actually, uh, we've actually seen more in the past. Now, the average home price is down 4.9% from the same time last year. That's a $62,994 decrease. The average home price was $1,213,864. Um, now the median, you can see here that the median has actually tended to veer away from the average price uh, a little bit more over 2007 and 2008. What that basically tells us is that the number of homes that are sold, the more of them were grouped below the average price than above it. Um, you can see in 2006, that average price was the average price. Just as many homes were above that price as below that price. So when looking at this graph and you're looking at the median bar, that median bar just kind of gives you an indication of where the, the number of homes that were sold were grouped. And in this case, it was grouped below the average price. Now, just to sort of give you a little bit more of an idea of the spread here, 
the highest priced single family residential home in Almaden was on Almaden Road and that sold for two million five hundred and fifty thousand dollars and it listed for two million seven hundred thousand dollars and it was on the market for 139 days the lowest price single-family residential home was on Calle Amaden and that sold for eight hundred and ten thousand dollars and it listed for it was listed for eight hundred and forty six thousand so a thirty six thousand dollar discount taken on that at the sale and that home was on the market for 54 days now the average price per square foot for the month of September in 2008 was $440.07. Last month's average price per square foot $468.21. So the average price per square foot went down a little bit, which makes sense because we we did see the the uh, the volume of homes at the bottom end being a little bit more weighted in the averages. So uh, still in a, still in a normal range as far as average price per square foot is concerned. Now let's go ahead and take a look at home prices over past months. And let's see. We've got, um, with anytime we look at a chart like this that goes month to month, we need to sort of keep in mind any seasonal changes that are taking place. Obviously, you tend to see things going down a little bit in, this, in the winter months. And of course, on the, this, really no graph demonstrates this better than this one since December of 2007 is the absolute lowest average price that we've seen going back all the way to June of 2007. But what we're really looking for here is sort of an idea of the general trends. Things tend to fluctuate a little bit. When you get smaller communities with smaller numbers of smaller numbers to sample, you'll get a little variation here. So what you want to do is try and figure out what the if, if A, if there's a pattern for previous months or last year at the same time. And then, of course, just try to get the general trend and account for it in your mind for the various areas that tend to be artificially high or artificially low. Because we are where we are right now, as far as the numbers are concerned, I, I'd say we're seeing generally flat performance on average price. But with the with the, the next two months being sort of crucial relating to the effect of the economic downturn, wouldn't surprise me if we actually saw prices drop more than we would normally expect even for the winter months. Now, last year in September, if, if we're using that as a guide at all, we had actually the highest average price that we saw throughout the whole months that we have on this particular graph. And then we saw a decrease after that, sort of steadily, taking us right into December, and then January saw a peak. So we would expect in the next couple of months a, a decrease in the average price anyway. I think we may see a little bit more of a pronounced decrease just because of the uh, market playing into it as far as the economic situation. Now let's go ahead and look at the median numbers. We can see whenever you see the median much further away from the average price, as I mentioned, that just shows things are clustered a little bit more below the average, the calculated average price. Um, and the average price actually stayed exactly the same from August to September. It didn't change. Um, August was actually a month where we actually sold a, a couple of homes that were much higher price, so that tends to throw off the average price. But in general, once you take into account the whole picture, the median and the average prices, you can still see that even when, and then when they count for the seasons again, you can see that we're all really very relatively flat. It would be from here over the short term, over a couple of months, we'd expect a little bit, bit of a decrease. Now, the percentage price change from month to month, it'd be just from August to September, we were down 3.1%. Median prices, I mentioned, didn't change at all. And that's all based on statistics from a grand total of 15 homes that sold in the month of September. Now, days to sell. This is uh, this is often a number that, that when I look more deeply into the numbers, I can find reasons why it was higher or lower. This is actually a pretty good sampling, so I wouldn't call this skewed one direction or another simply because one home had been on the market way, way longer than all the others. There are, there are no, there were no homes that had that were just way out of the sample as far as being on the market a, a very long time. Uh, now, the days to sell, well, compared to last year, it's down two days, so two days less time to get a home sold in Almaden Valley this month of September and 2008 than the same month last year. That's down 2.9%. Now the lowest days on the market was three, the highest days on the market was 139, the next closest below that was 133, and the next one below that was about 115, I believe. So no big, just out there number. All the numbers were sort of grouped together normally. The distribution was fairly normal. Let me sort of give you the layout on that. Now, no homes sold before they got onto the MLS. Two homes sold in the first week, in the first one to seven days. Uh, they were, uh, let's see, one home was on the market eight to 30 days. Seven homes were on the market 31 to 90 days. 
five homes were on the market in 90 days or more. Now about 20% of homes sold in 30 days or less. Last month, 43% of homes sold in 30 days or less. So despite the fact that we're seeing a, a net decrease in the days on market here, the majority of folks who got their homes sold, more of them are uh, spending that higher amount of time trying to get the home sold. So the average experience for the seller out there, you're, while it's while the average is 66 days, it, it's less of an equation where you can say, you know, there's still a lot of folks managing to get their home sold in a lesser amount of time. That 66 days is, is really, odds are, if you're trying to get your home sold and you're doing what you need to do to get the home marketed, you're gonna spend at least 66 days in the market. I think that's I think that 66 days is a very good estimation of, of what you can expect in today's market when you're trying to get your home sold in Almaden Valley. Now let's go ahead and look at the same numbers over the past months. We can see that it's definitely up from last month. Um, again, the, these, these numbers aren't skewed. These, these are pretty good representative numbers of what's actually happening in your marketplace. And of course you get the, the various uh, changes here in market. And what we have here are some, some ch strange changes in terms of uh, seasonal influences. Now normally you would expect the longest days on market to be in the winter months and we did get a, an increase in the winter months as far as November or December is concerned but you usually also see a pretty big increase in January since what we're seeing in January are homes that were actually purchased in December because of the 30-day escrow but what we saw instead was an actual pretty big decrease in, in January and we wouldn't normally expect the summer months February, March, April at least leading into those summer months to be quite that high What's interesting about that is a lot of that was the sell-off of market uh, of inventory that had been on the market for a long time, and when I when I talked about this to clients previously, this was sort of a good sign. This was showing that the homes that had been on the market for an exceptionally long time were now starting to sell. We were starting to sort of get through that old inventory. Well, that trend stopped in May and June. We actually started to see the homes again start to sell that had just freshly arrived on the market. We started to and that trend kind of continued, but it it, it because sales were actually fairly robust over the summer months for Almaden Valley. We still got a little bit of a bump in the average numbers for that for July and August, but if you remember last month's presentation, and as I mentioned before, there were a, most folks out there getting their homes sold were still getting their homes sold in less than 30 days. And now this is the month we've seen a reversal of that. Instead of most people getting their homes sold in less than 30 days, or at least a, a good number of them, not most, 43%, still a good healthy number this month 20 percent that shows the shift that we've seen that most pe people's experience is now going to be longer days on market even when you're doing everything right even when you're making yourself the most attractive home on the in the price range and the other things i've suggested that sellers do to get those homes sold now i appreciate y'all taking the time to listen to what i have to say on these subjects uh, if you'd like to read any articles I've written on real estate, listen to my weekly podcast, or check out any of my other market analysis videos, you can find all of those at my website at www.soldbyrobert.com. If you'd like to email me with any questions, ideas, suggestions, or observa observations, please send those to robert at soldbyrobert.com. If you'd like to give me a phone call and discuss anything relating to real estate, I'd love to chat with you. You can call me at 408-852-0525. If you prefer to chat online, you can use AOL Instant Messenger, Google Talk, or Yahoo I Am. The screen name is The Rebel Broker. And if you prefer to discuss things with me using Skype, you can just use Rebel Broker as the screen name. Finally, referrals are always appreciated. If you or anyone you know is interested in buying real estate in Silicon Valley, I'd be happy to help you in any way I can. And even if you're not looking for real estate in Silicon Valley, I can help you find the right agent for you anywhere in the United States. So give me a call or get in touch in any other ways I've noted here and I can help you track down the right agent. Thanks again, and I look forward to talking to you all next time.